new week, new version of DaVinci Resolve, and yet another way to do uh, installs for templates and stuff. Um, I just recently posted my new install guide and I try to always find the easiest way to install different templates, mainly for the edit page without having to go into the file structure and you know go around from folder to folder because every platform is a little bit different, right? And then in here, if you guys are interested in free templates, I added three new ones here. Now we actually have like icons, right? So that's that's kind of cool to see. Um, but this is just one of the one of the new ones that um, was added in, right? So, so now that the Slick Transitions Pro Pack has been out for a couple months, thought that it would be a good time to give it a little update. I had an email that someone sent to me that they wanted something from like a previous pack and they didn't see it in the new one. So I just added this in and this is this particular push. It's just pushing the new clip over top of the old one, right? So the old one never moves. And the person that uh, reached out to me, I guess had one of my older packs and they liked the push, almost like how this color push works, right? But they liked that the old video is sliding and then the new one's sliding as well. So, so they work pretty much the same way. Um, if you haven't seen how the new packs work, they're actually pretty cool. Um, we have for this one, we have up, down, left, right. You so you can pick whichever way you want it to go. It's pretty self-explanatory. And then we have the ability to change the characteristics of the animation. So if we wanted to, you know, keep this as normal and then have it bounce at the end. I think now we're at like eight or 9,000 um, variations amongst the whole pack. It's looking kind of like a cool thing. And then I guess next I'll just put a, a drop down for clockwise or counterclockwise. And then I guess that would be considered this move as a counterclockwise move, right? Yeah. It's like going clockwise and then it's undoing. So I, I guess we'll just call that clockwise, right? Cause it's like, initially starting going clockwise, but then it goes counterclockwise. Um, and then should happen is if we go the other way, I ran into an issue because I didn't spell them out right. All right, so there we go, right? Now it's going the other way and this one is going that way, the other way. Okay, so there we go. I think we are good on that. And remember all of this that has like the steppiness, once we turn up motion blur, that gets super smooth, right? So we could really get this to look pretty crazy. So many steps you can't even tell, right? So do you really need to turn it up higher than whatever we're at now too? Look how good that is starting to look, right? My go-to is typically always 10. Um, Cause I feel like, yes, if you, you know, you just really zoom in here, you can start to see it, but um, zoomed out far enough, you, you don't even, you don't even tell. So I'm back uh, working on more updates. The, the things that I'm working on today are the icons. They recently just enabled us to start making icons like this. So I've been trying to figure out the style of an icon that I want, and I'm trying to figure out like the best workflow for it. Well, let's bring this in and take a look. That is our initial icon. And then it goes out to be gray because that's kind of like the colors of the UI. So then let's get two more. And then all I'm going to do within these two is get a, um, Transform, actually, hold on a second. Let me see how this would look. Transform, and then we come over here and we split colors and we shift. Look at that, perfect. So that's what, exactly what we'll do. And then we'll grab another one. And I think this should work like this. We'll shift this the other way. Like that, and then combine these two and a little bit of a warp effect. So, Let's do displace and then maybe get 
the fast noise and I forget exactly how this is supposed to connect up, but we'll connect it up and okay, I think that is actually working correctly. Actually, yeah. So we'll do maybe something like that and maybe put a transform in before just so we can make it a little smaller and then really give it everything. And then we can sit here and we can play with this to suit till we can get like a cool look. And maybe let's offset these a little bit vertical. So there we go. Now we kind of have that like color shift. I feel like that kind of would represent RGB warp. I worked on this for a couple hours. It just took a little while to figure out the proper uh, size of everything so you could actually see it. And I guess the workflow as well took a little time to figure out, but I think they came out pretty good. So I'm almost done here and I just restarted uh, DaVinci to see what they look like. And so far they're looking pretty good. And I like how they stand out. So if you, you know, have all of your others and you want to find those, if you don't search, they'll just stand out. So I think that that's pretty cool. So I think that kind of concludes what I've been working on uh, this week as far as updates go. I would be curious for anyone that did make it this far, if I did some type of a course teaching either different aspects of DaVinci Resolve or specifically Fusion, if you guys would be interested in that, I think I'm going to uh, work on like long structured courses for different aspects of DaVinci Resolve. I think that's my next uh, endeavor. Uh, but yeah, that kind of concludes this. The pack, uh, I did release that. Uh, I believe two, it depends on when I actually uh, upload this, but like two days ago and a bunch of people downloaded it, haven't had any issues. So the new DaVinci Resolve uh, bundles are working well. And uh, yeah, I don't really know what else to add here. So I guess I'll just see you guys in the next video next week. So with that being said, my name's JR. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and I'll see you guys later. Peace.